In a world where pretty much every YouTuber and tech reviewer is obsessed with reviewing mid-range and premium laptops, I like to take a step back every now and then and look at what the budget and ultra budget category have to offer. And in that regard, one of the most prominent figures undoubtedly is Lenovo's IdeaPad 1 series. I've done reviews on these in the past and today we're looking at the latest generation of the IdeaPad 1i. Now just to be clear, the i stands for Intel, so if you see a 1i, it's an Intel variant. If you just see the number one, it's a AMD variant. The configuration in particular right here is rocking Intel's N6000 Pentium Silver Series processor. We have a measly four gigabytes of DDR4 memory and an even smaller 128 gigabytes of solid state drive storage. Now we do get Wi-Fi 6 as well as Bluetooth 5 standards on board and this is a 15 inch laptop with a full HD display. Now keeping in mind that this is a very budget friendly laptop, we're gonna keep things in relevance so we're not gonna compare it against the most high end laptop. We're gonna see if this offers everything you'd expect from a budget laptop and if there's anything noteworthy in particular. So let's get started. From an unboxing perspective, this thing comes in a pretty plain and simple cardboard box. Once you open the box itself, inside you'll find of course the laptop itself behind all that protective packaging, here it is. You also have the inclusion of a 45 watt charging adapter, though you don't get USB-C charging on the box, but I suppose that's fair at this price point. You also of course have the standard wall outlet charging cable piece, and finally a quick start guide and some basic documentation. One of my favorite things about about the IdeaPad 1 series is the fact that despite being a budget laptop, it still looks and feels just as good as the higher end IdeaPad 3 and 5 series. Granted, it doesn't have the same metallic finish as they do, rather you have a full plastic body here, but it doesn't feel finicky or cheap, rather it's sturdy and it gives that nice professional business look you might want from an IdeaPad laptop. Plus that abyss blue color here looks so nice and stunning. Now this laptop does have a modest weight of about 3.5 pounds, which is surprisingly a little bit heavier than I thought it should be given. Again, it's a full plastic build, but it's not too bad. Starting with the top, like I mentioned, you have a full plastic surface here. It's clean and simple, though it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet. Unfortunately, you'll also notice you have the Lenovo badging on the side, but a pretty graceful look, all things considered. You'll find a decent variety of ports on either side of this laptop. So on one side, you have a DC charging port, a USB-A 3.0 port, a HDMI 1.4 port, a basic USB-C port. You also have a headphone jack. On the other side, you will find one more USB-A port, though it is 2.0, and you have, interestingly enough, a full-size SD card reader, a feature that's often not found on laptops several times more expensive than this one, so can't complain. The bottom of this laptop is pretty standard stuff, so you have a plastic surface finish. You'll notice you have a large air intake vent, which is semi-pointless because you don't actually have a cooling fan on this device. I guess it's mostly there for passive cooling. And then on either corner at the bottom, you'll see you have a speaker grill, so it's a bottom firing setup. We'll definitely do a sound test in a bit. As soon as you unfold this laptop, you immediately notice you have a lot of palm rest space here, which is always a good thing. And that abyss blue color again just makes this device look so elegant. Now with that said, you'll notice you have a relatively small trackpad proportionate to the rest of the body. However, the good news is that despite having a plastic surface finish, it's a very tactile trackpad. There isn't a ton of flex, and I generally find that using it is actually quite bearable. In fact, I'd say it's one of the better trackpads you'd find on a laptop in general. The keyboard here is more or less in line with the rest of the IdeaPad series. So you have those well-labeled keycaps with those semi-rectangular designs. You have a decent amount of spacing between each keycap, though I hate that split in half shift key with the slash button. It's a huge design flaw in my opinion. You also have the inclusion of a 10 keypad since this is the 15 inch variant, though you still don't get any sort of backlighting, but I suppose that's fair enough. Now, as far as the typing experience goes, it's still pretty darn good, though I do feel like there is a very 
very slight drop in quality. This year's model feels like it has a little bit less key travel, so it gives it a more shallow feeling. But still, I think this is probably the best budget keyboard I've seen on a laptop. You still there? I'm so happy to see that. If you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing to this channel. It genuinely helps me grow and means the world to me. Let's carry on. Hinge quality isn't half bad either. You have a single mechanism hinge over here, and the impressive part is that you can do a near 180 degree tilt. Now, as far as the display fitting goes, you do have a standard plastic lip all around, though you have a relatively thin chin at the bottom, fairly narrow bezels that are in line with modern day standards, and a thin enough forehead at the center of which you will find a 1 megapixel 720p webcam, which is good enough to make you look like a Minecraft character, though I wouldn't use it for your dating needs. With that said though, you do get a built-in privacy shutter, so that's gotta count for something, right? The display quality is arguably the least impressive part of this machine, though that's kind of expected I suppose. So starting with the good stuff, you have a full HD resolution or 1920 by 1080p, which is actually an upgrade from last year's 720p base display. You also have a 60Hz refresh rate, a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. You have a pretty high quality IPS panel here with great viewing angles. Now for the gloomy stuff, you have a peak brightness of just 220 nits. That means that in bright settings or daylight settings, your screen will be plagued by glare as there's just not enough brightness to compensate for it, so do be wary of that. Now, on a more gloomier note, you have a 45% NTSC rating or approximately 56% sRGB, meaning colors will look like they've died on this machine. Needless to say, you should not be doing color sensitive activities like photo or video editing, though it'll be fine for general use like web browsing, for example. Let's quickly talk about performance as well. I need you guys to understand something. This is a Intel Pentium Silver processor. This thing is designed to do as little work as possible, and that's not an insult. I just mean that's its true capacity. So if you're doing stuff like web browsing, writing up Word documents, checking out the news, it's going to be just fine. It's designed for that kind of stuff. But if you're going to try to use this laptop and its mere four gigabytes of RAM to do stuff like, let's say, benchmarking, photo editing, programming, in most cases, it's just not possible. This laptop will choke up, lag, and ultimately just not do those kind of tasks. If you are trying to buy this laptop for any of the activities I mentioned, or let's say for even casual gaming, do not do that. This laptop is designed for a very basic and standard use case. So keep that in mind. On that note, as far as thermals go, let's say you're watching full HD videos on the web, you can hit a maximum average surface temperature of just around 32 degrees Celsius, which isn't too shabby given the fact that you have no active cooling or basically no cooling fan on this machine, though it won't go much higher than that and will immediately thermal throttle if you try doing anything more intensive. With a 45 watt hour battery, you'll get around seven and a half hours of real world battery time on a single charge. As far as speaker quality goes, it's actually not bad. So you have bottom firing speakers like I mentioned earlier. Here's a quick sound test for you. With a approximate retail price of 280 US dollars, the IdeaPad 1i is more or less a ultra budget Windows laptop. Now keep in mind you get Windows 11 S mode by default, but you can actually remove the S mode entirely. I made a video on it. I'll leave the link somewhere above there. But anyway, you can definitely check that out. Now, with that said, the One Eye does give you some cool perks given its price point. For beginners, you have a really nice build here. The quality is pretty good for a laptop of this class, despite being a full plastic build. And while the laptop is a little bit heavier than I like it to be, it's still just a well-designed machine. I also appreciate the fact that you have a decent trackpad and keyboard over here, and also some pretty robust sounding speakers. Now, keep in mind the biggest compromise with these type of laptops is performance. This laptop is very basic in its use case. If you are doing anything more than general productivity, it most likely will not be enough for your needs due to the limited amount of RAM, processing power, as well as storage capacity. 
With that said though, again, if your use case is basic, I think you'll appreciate what this machine has to offer as it definitely gives you a fair amount of value for the price you pay. And often these laptops go on sale, so you may end up paying a lot less than the base price I told you about. Let me know what you think of the IdeaPad 1i. If you already have one, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And as always, if you enjoyed the content, please consider subbing to this channel. It genuinely helps me grow and means the world to me. Catch you in the next one.